What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 10th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Thursday edition of the podcast. A very somber, sad Thursday. And typically, I have I've gone through my process before, kind of outline everything and get everything sort of in order. And I do, with the exception of this Phillies game. Uh, I'll be honest, after the game was over, I went right to bed um, and just haven't really processed or thought about much yet. And it's just a level of frustration. And I'll have more coherent things, but like your eight million, eight hundred million dollar core didn't do anything. JT Real Muto was non-existent. Uh, you couldn't lay off. Pit- Everybody knew they were throwing you bad pitches, and yet we were chasing them. And it's like three and one. Take the extra pitch. Like I remember, my little league coach had the most exaggerated take sign ever. Everybody in the league knew what the take sign was, and these guys just didn't take pitches. The only dude that showed up was Castellanos. Ranger Suarez pitched his ass off. Didn't get much help. Um, I don't know. There's plenty of blame to go around. We'll have a lot more in the coming days and weeks about what's been going on with this team. But it's just I don't I don't even know where to start. So everything I'm saying right now is very incoherent and probably all over the place. But it's like you had a golden opportunity and. The history of postseason baseball in this city, you don't get many opportunities. And there's a lot to be said about peaking too soon. We look how in 2022, how that went. And now we peak too soon. I mean, look at the Mets who peaked at the right time and are likely going to the World Series. Um, it's, It's just frustrating. It's the exact carbon copy of the... Eagles, the way they end it down the stretch, and it's just, uh, it's annoying, it's frustrating, it's disappointing. I don't think any of us are surprised with the outcome of that game yesterday. I, I think we all had hope and thought maybe this time would be different, but it certainly did not work out that way. And like I said, plenty of blame to go around. We'll dive into that, but uh, I don't know. I saw some people put it on Twitter, and it really hit home that this Phillies team has become the Sixers and it's just I don't know they ran it back I I don't necessarily disagree with running it back this year Uh, I I think they had the talent they showed it I think it came down to they peaked too soon and didn't really have anything more to base it on but we'll have more on it moving forward um, and look ahead but does lead to the question of the day which was more disappointing, the 2023 Eagles or the 2024 Phillies? I think you can make the case for both. Uh, but let me know. 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Good day to use that. Vent. Get everything off your chest and uh, just let it all out. The Aryan of Grievances. Uh, we'll do an early Festivus. Uh, but I, I think i got to go with this Phillies team because we know what they were capable of. I think last year's Eagles team it was a lot of smoke and mirrors. So... Let me know your thoughts, though. 267-495-8531. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Spread the word. If you know somebody out there who needs the, to get through this, we'll start a Philly support group through the Back to the Future voice and text line and just let it all out, get everything off our chest, and then go from there. Follow me on social media, tw- Twitter and TikTok, at Jimbo underscore Mont, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Spread the word, though. We'll, we'll, we'll start our own Philly support group. And then it is almost time for the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We're making our final preparations for that. All the information is in the link in the description. Big, big class, big things happening this year. So be sure to check that out. Uh, But again, which one was more disappointing? The 2023 Eagles or this year's Phillies teams? Let me know. 267-495-8531. All right. Be sure to check out Philly Goat. Not probably going to get the red October, but they got you covered for Eagle season as well. Uh, so go. They have plenty of Kelly Green stuff. It's hoodie season. Get a hoodie or two and use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com. Promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. And then go check out my boys at the Clashing Conferences. New football podcast dropped today. Excited to listen to that. Uh, really 
excited to see how the baseball one turns out uh, with Mike. And then bas- basketball is around the corner. I got some things lined up with them for later in the year, so stay tuned for that. All right. Eagles news. Both AJ and Devontae look like they're going to play. Lane looks like he's going to play. Sidney Brown returned to practice. They did open up his window, and he looked good moving into this. So that's going to be a welcome addition to the secondary. Uh, Cooper DeGene might get the start over Avante Maddox, which I don't think is a bad thing. I, I, let's see what the kid can do. Uh, but very like this is the ultimate game you need to come out of the bye. And if it goes south, man, and, and, and maybe it's the negativity from the Phillies, but it's going to get ugly here in Philly. They need to come out and win by three touchdowns on Sunday. Um, but interesting press conference from Jalen Hurts. Uh, it said he has full confidence in Nick Sirianni. He said they've been through a lot of adversity together separately. Uh, but they have a good relationship. He has full confidence in him, and he is looking forward to uh, what the rest of the season brings. And I am too. I'm, I, I really do think uh, a lot of good things are on the horizon. So uh, maybe I'm drinking the Kool-Aid and I'm looking for something to hang my hat on. I do wish this press conference happened earlier in the season when all that other stuff went down. But um uh, Good to hear Jalen have the coaches back. And I I think the timing of it is interesting. And now they need to come out and play. Uh, Jeremiah Trotter apparently is now the backup Mike linebacker. So that means he should get some more playing time. Excited to see what he can do. And then Brandon Graham will make his 200th appearance for the Eagles. Most in team history. The only one with 200. So shout out to BG, the old Michigan Wolverine. Sixers look to open their NBA preseason on Friday against Minnesota. Looking forward to that, seeing them play against real NBA players. Uh, And then the Flyers open up tomorrow out in Vancouver. We'll do a Flyers preview tomorrow, and I'll give you that full season bet to keep us interested. Um, Look Again, Lots of things to look forward to, hopefully to get the the nasty taste of the Phillies out of our mouth. Uh, And again, apologize that I didn't go too much into the Phillies, but I didn't have anything to write. I just kind of went off the cuff. It's just disappointing. It's just, it reminds me so much of those Andy Reid, Donovan McNabb teams where because the expectations are so high, you kind of get loss and you don't enjoy the regular season or the process because all you're focused on is the end goal like that 2022 Phillies team was so much fun because it came out of nowhere but as the expectations rose I think it took the fun I didn't have any fun during this series uh, at all it was more stressful than anything and to have that kind of showing is just ridiculous and then even if you go back to the the last time the Phillies went on a run the 08 team was so much fun because it came like it, it was just fun. Uh, the 09 to a certain point was fun because they got back to the World Series, but 2010, 2011 wasn't fun because all you wanted was another championship. And I know that goes with the territory and everything, but it, there's a lot of work to do. And like I said, we will get more into what they need to do and. I, I, I'm I'm going to go on the record and say I was fine with them running it back this year. It's just that they peaked too soon and just didn't didn't have a disciplined approach at the plate throughout the playoffs and even during that. Like they just and you could tell they were pressing. They were trying to do too much. Um, I mean, look at Bone. I mean, Bone might not even be back next year. Who knows? Like, there's just so many question marks. Um, but. We are going to continue our Red October for the next couple days until we get into our Sixers preview. Uh, Hopefully relive some of those big memories from Philly's past. We got two today just because of the way the schedule happened to fall. First, on this day back in 1993, it was game four of the 93 NLCS. Phillies were down two games to one. I was hoping that this was going to take on a different meaning uh, today, but here we are. They needed a big win down in Atlanta after they got blown out in back-to-back games. It was John Maddox, or John Maddox, John Smoltz versus Danny Jackson. 
and it turned out to be everything you thought it would be for a pitcher's duel. Braves led 1-0 in the bottom of the second, and then Kevin Stocker and Danny Jackson helped himself out. Both had RBIs in the top of the fourth. Jackson was in and out of trouble all game, but that's how the score ended. 2-1, to one, Phillies got the win. Danny Jackson went 7-2, and two thirds, six strikeouts, two walks. Mitch Williams got the four outs saved, and the Phillies went on a nice little three-game winning streak to go to the World Series. Again, I thought that was going to have a much different meaning today, but alas, here we are. We can reminisce over the good old days. But that all happened on this day, October 10th, 1993. Phils beat the Braves 2-1, Game 4 of the NLCS to even it up. They would go on to win the next two. Uh, we know how that, we don't need to talk about that. Enough disappointment. We'll, 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 we'll stay with the NLCS. We won't talk about the 93 World Series at all. All right. Again, this all takes on a different meaning now that the Phillies are out. But our Red October great game in Phillies postseason history. We're going to go back to game four of the 2008 NLCS. And the Phillies had won the first two games in Philly. They lost game three in L.A. And the Dodgers were looking to, to even the series up. Put Derek Lowe out there on three days rest. But Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley started it off uh, with doubles. Then Ryan Howard grounded out. It was 2 nothing fills right from the get-go. Dodgers did get one back in the bottom of the first. Then Ryan Howard scored on a wild pitch in the sixth to tie it. Dodgers got two more back in the bottom of the sixth. It was a back-and-forth type game. And led 5-3 to three going into the 8th inning. And this is where the fun started. Uh, Victorino hit a two-run shot to tie it. And I think everybody talks about what we're going to talk about next. More so, but that Victorino home run was huge. Because it tied the game and allowed Matt Stairs to even get the opportunity. And I think Victorino was so key in that 2008 postseason run. Uh, a lot of people talk about Howard. A lot of people talk about Utley, Rollins, all of the other uh, Cole Hamels. But I think Victorino was the underrated player from that 2008 run. He had the big grand slam we talked about against the Brewers. And then if it wasn't for this home run, we're having a different conversation. And Matt Stairs doesn't get a chance to be, be the hero. But Chooch came up, hit a two-out single. Matt Stairs pinch hit for Ryan Matson. Took Jonathan Broxton's 3-1 pitch deep to right. Phillies go up 7-5. And at that point, that's when I think I really started to believe that they had a legitimate shot to win the World Series. Was after Stairs hit that. It was sort of like a magical thing. Like, all right, you can never count this team out. They had been coming from behind all season. But I think at that point, you go up 3-1 in the NLCS. I started, that's when it really hit me that, damn, this team might win the World Series. But Matt Stairs was the hero. Everybody remembers Matt Stairs' home run. But Shane Victorino's home run was just as big because if not, you don't have if he gets out there, pretty much the inning's over. Matt Stairs doesn't even have a chance to be the hero. But our Red October, great game in Phillies postseason history is game four, the 2000 NLCS. Phillies beat the Dodgers seven to five to go up Three games to one. Shane Victorino and Matt Stairs both hit huge eighth inning home runs to give the Phillies the win. And like I said, this is when I started to believe that, hey, this team is legit and can win the World Series. On this day, 1993, Phillies beat the Braves 2-1 to one in game four of the 93 NLCS to tie that series at two games apiece. They would go on to win the next two. Danny Jackson was the star both at the plate and... And on the mound as the Phillies beat John Smoltz down in Atlanta. Hard to do. Uh, we'll have our Flyers preview tomorrow. I'll give you the season-long bet for us to uh, stay invested in the Flyers all year. Be sure to check out Clashing Conferences. We'll have a lot more on the Phillies tomorrow. I apologize for the shortness. I just uh, I, just trying to gather my thoughts. Like I was processing a little bit at the gym this morning and I actually had to turn on. I usually listen to WIP in the morning uh, just to kind of get what happened overnight and things like that. I had to turn it off because I'm like, I can't deal with this right now. I'm sure we're all in a very similar spot. I'll, I'll be more prepared tomorrow. I, 
I just, I'm just pissed off more than anything because you don't get opportunities like that. And the fact that it was there for the taking and they squandered it away, especially when you were running it back and you had openly talked about World Series or bust and that's the effort you put in the NLDS. I mean, that's, like I said, right out of the 2023 Eagles playbook. And that is the question of the day. Which season was more disappointing? 2023 Eagles, 2024 Phillies, maybe because it's still fresh. I got to go with the Phillies. Um, But let me know your thoughts. 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get your feelings out. This is a support, therapeutic Thursday, let's call it. Get your rant, rave, whatever you need to do. Tell your friends. If you have somebody who's struggling with getting over this loss, have them call me and we'll get through this together. We'll have more on the fills tomorrow. Flyers preview. Continue our Red October. And now, it, it, like I said, it takes on a different meaning. And it, maybe we can just, it'll help us get over our grief. Um, but I think that, I mean, this Philly season has to rank up there as one of the top disappointing, as my uncle, one uncle says, lumps of all time in Philly sports history. But let me know what you think. 267 495 8531. I'm going to go power through my day now. I hope you do the same. Have yourselves a Thursday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for October 10th, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.